Hey y'all, this is Troy Black. So I have a prophetic word from the Lord to share with you about Gateway Church in Texas. So I recently heard this word from the Lord specifically about Gateway Church and at first I didn't know what to think about it because the Lord doesn't typically give me words for specific churches. I share a lot of prophecy online if you're new to my content, but I try to share under the guidelines of scripture, especially 1 Corinthians 14, 1 Thessalonians. There, there's so many passages in scripture that talk about the way prophecy should be shared, but also what is prophecy for? This is one great verse. 1 Corinthians 14, 4 says, the one who speaks in a tongue edifies himself, but the one who prophesies edifies the church. So prophecy to the church is meant for edification. And there's other reasons for it listed in scripture as well, but this is one of the big things about prophecy. If you're hearing what is considered a prophetic word by someone and yet you walk away afraid or you walk away discouraged or you walk away in despair, that's probably not from God because it's not edifying you and you are part of the church. So my heart is to be encouraging. My heart is to edify and also share part of this warning that I got from the Lord. Yes, I do believe the Lord can warn us, but if God is warning us, it is not to make us afraid. Instead, it is to share his heart about something that may be affecting us. And what should our response be? And a lot of times the Lord just wants to encourage us, his people. And listen, you do not have to hear a word like this from someone online who is sharing prophetic words. You can hear from the Holy Spirit yourself. And I know Robert Morris, who is the pastor at Gateway Church, has a lot of great teaching about that. Frequency is one of my favorite series that he does. And one more thing I want to say real quick is if you attend Gateway Church or you consider that your home church and the leadership there disagrees with what I'm sharing here or what I'm saying, please follow your spiritual leadership above what I'm saying. Please don't say, yeah, but what about this random guy on the internet that said this? Listen to the leading of the Holy Spirit, but it's also a really good idea as the Holy Spirit leads you to walk in submission under the spiritual authorities that God has placed in our lives. So I encourage you to do that as well. So this is the word I heard. I heard this back on March 3rd, 2023, and I was in worship and I began to hear this word from the Lord. He said, Gateway Church is under spiritual assault at the moment. He said, the enemy is moving his forces around because he hates what is happening at Gateway and its sister churches, its church family. So I believe the Lord is talking about sister churches here, meaning churches that are either working with Gateway or churches that are related to Gateway. And then I heard the Lord say, don't let it in. Tell fear it must go. And he said, unite to pray and cover Gateway worship. The mixture of worship and the word is infiltrating homes and setting people free and the devil is mad. Now, I'm going to stop for a second, and I want to ask you this question, and then I'll finish sharing what I heard. How do you think God responds when he hears that the devil is mad about something that he's doing? Probably just laughs, right? And we should have the same response. This should not worry us or not make us afraid or fearful, but instead, if the Lord is encouraging us to pray, we can just respond with faith, and we can pray. And listen, prayer doesn't always have to be, I was interceding for five hours tonight in my prayer closet. Like sometimes a prayer prayed in faith, standing on the Word of God, is more powerful than hours of struggling and striving from a place of trying to earn something from God. Every spiritual blessing is ours, the Word says, in Christ Jesus, in what Jesus did for us on the cross. This is not a striving game. It's not something we're earning but the word also encourages us still to pray and to ask God for help, to ask God for the things we need and to believe that he hears us. This is the next thing I heard the Lord say for Gateway. He said, sanctify yourself as you surrender to my will for you this season as a body and as elders and leadership. So this is not coming from me. I honestly don't even have a right to be sharing this word with Gateway Church or any of the leadership there. I'm trying to be as obedient to the Holy Spirit as I can. I heard the Lord say this next, my power is flowing through you to reach nations, to reach the lost, to set captives free through the testimony of God's amazing grace in Jesus Christ. And then I heard the Lord say this, and it's super encouraging. He said, my fire is falling now the way it did on the day of Pentecost as I raise up leadership to step in and stand in the gap. And y'all, just as a short testimony, as I was hearing this word, I could feel 
what I would call the fire of the Holy Spirit, or many people would refer to it as the power of God. While I was hearing this word, and oftentimes the Lord will use that to confirm words to me. But listen, you don't have to feel a feeling for the power of God to be at work in your life. Sometimes you'll experience something like that. Oftentimes you won't. The word says, then you shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. I remember the day that I, I heard the gospel from the Holy Spirit. You know, I was seeking the Lord, reading the Word, but the Holy Spirit made it so clear to my heart, and He reiterated it to me. And in that moment, I got it. And when I got it, I got free. The bounds of sin and the chains of the addictions and the habits I had been taking part in, like they fell off of me. Listen, I didn't feel necessarily the power of God in that moment, but there was a sense of freedom that happened. And oftentimes, it's the simplest small thing that God will use. Sometimes, how do you know this is God's will? How do you know this is the way I'm supposed to be going? How do you know this is the way I'm supposed to be responding? The peace of God is going to follow us walking out God's will. And if the peace is not there, the fruit of the Spirit is not there, that's oftentimes showing us that there's a problem, but we can walk through a whole lot of persecution and a whole lot of trials as long as we have the peace of God because then we know this is where God has set me. This is where he wants me to be. So this is what the Holy Spirit said, my power is flowing through you to reach nations, to reach the lost, to set captives free through the testimony of God's amazing grace in Jesus Christ. So this is actually Mark 16, 15. This is what Jesus has commissioned us as Christians to do. It says, and he said to them, go into all the world and preach the gospel to all creation. I know that churches like Gateway Church are doing this. The devil is always gonna fight back against the work of God on the earth today. But the Word has some very encouraging things to share with us when this happens, okay? Romans 8, 18 is amazing. For I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory that is to be revealed to us. So Paul is saying it's such a little thing. Spending eternity with the one who came and died for you and saved you of all your sin and rescued you, you know, when nobody else could do that. Spending eternity with him is going to be so much more than anything we have to walk through in this present time to be obedient to the Lord and what the Holy Spirit is leading us to do. And then this is just such an amazing way to wrap up this chapter. Verse 31 says, What then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who is against us? He who did not spare his own son, but delivered him over for us all, how will he not also with him freely give us all things? Who will bring charges against God's elect? So who's the one that brings the charges? It's the, the accuser of the brethren. It's Satan, right? Oftentimes he's, he's bringing these charges to try to stop the work of God, or he's trying to bring back, and I, I believe this is a word for someone right now, from the Holy Spirit. He's trying to bring back up old habits or shame from past sins that have been covered by the blood. He's trying to bring those back up to try to put a stumbling block in front of us or to try to stop us from walking out the will of God in our lives. And the word says, who will bring charges against God's elect? It says, God is the one who justifies. Who is the one who condemns? There is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. And we need to stand on that truth as believers. And then it says, Christ Jesus is he who died, but rather was raised, who is at the right hand of God, who also intercedes for us. Why is it saying, but rather was raised? It's saying because of his victory and his resurrection, we can experience victory in the Lord. And we always have a hope of the resurrection power. And especially when Jesus returns, <laughs> all who died in Christ Jesus are going to be raised. Then look at this. It says, who will separate us from the love of Christ? Will tribulation or trouble or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword? Just as it is written, for your sake we are killed all day long. We were regarded as sheep to be slaughtered. But in all these things we overwhelmingly conquer through him who loved us. And then I love what James 1 verse 2 says. It says, Consider it all joy, my brothers and sisters, when you encounter various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces endurance. And let endurance have its perfect result, so that you may be perfect and complete, lacking in nothing. The, the perfection and, and the being complete here that it's talking about is not talking about salvation now, because we are made complete in Christ Jesus. We're made perfect in God's eyes when we believe in Jesus and we accept him as our Lord and Savior. We're forgiven of our sins. But what it's talking about now is it's referring more to the plan of God for our lives. See, God, not only did he look ahead and he say, I, I want you to be in my family, but he also designed you with a plan in mind, with a purpose for your life. So that's what it's talking about, the work of God being worked out through your life, through my life, and through places like Gateway Church. So I hope this word has been encouraging 
man, I hope it's lifted you up, uh, especially if you've been facing some of these things that the Word is talking about. Go read Romans chapter 8. If this is applying to you, go read that chapter, meditate on it. Let the Holy Spirit speak to you through it. I love you all so much, and I'll see you next time.